Hello everyone, my name is Sergey Igorov. I'm a recent PhD graduate from the Department of Immunology at the University of Toronto. And today on the behalf of my colleagues at the University of Toronto, Uganda Virus Research Institute and the International AIDS Vaccine Initiative, I'll share with you the highlights of our research on the effects of treating Schistosoma mansoni infection on HIV susceptibility in women. HIV remains a leading cause of global morbidity with the highest burden in Sub-Saharan Africa. For reasons that are incompletely understood, the likelihood of HIV acquisition in Sub-Saharan Africa is several fold higher than in Western countries, and most of these infections are acquired by women. In the East African region, bordering Lake Victoria, high HIV transmission geographically overlaps with a parasitic Schistosoma mansoni infection. We and other researchers hypothesized that this overlap could at least in part be driving the elevated HIV susceptibility seen in the region. Schistosomiasis is largely a chronic condition that affects over 230 million people worldwide. It's a neglected tropical disease predominantly targeting impoverished communities who have limited access to healthcare. This photo depicts typical pathomorphological signs of the so-called intestinal schisto caused by Schistosoma mansoni worms residing in the veins that primarily surround the gut. The swollen belly is due to inflammatory processes that take place in the abdomen and result in organ enlargement. The other form of schistosomiasis is a genitourinary form or genitourinary schistosomiasis uh, caused by schistosoma hematobium parasites. This type of uh, schistosomiasis is rare around Lake Victoria and will not be the focus of this presentation. Infection with schistosomiasis occurs when people come in contact with egg contaminated water. These electron microphotographs depict schistosomes, which are approximately 3 mm in length. The larger worm is a male that forms a cleft within which the female schistosome resides. The male and female schistosomes are found in a state of constant copulation and egg production. The microscopic eggs secreted by the parasites aim to find their way through blood vessels and mucosae into the gut lumen to ultimately be excreted with feces and to continue the schistosome life cycle. These maps depict the distribution of schistosomiasis prevalence across Uganda. You can clearly see that S. mansoni infection occurs quite frequently throughout the country and is especially prevalent around Lake Victoria and near our study site in Entebbe. As hematobium, on the other hand, the cause of genitourinary schistosomiasis is quite rare in the region. Although, like other helminths, adult schistosomes themselves suppress immunity by modulating immune system components such as the T helper 1 and interferon signaling, their eggs induce inflammation that damages the gut mucosa and surrounding tissues. These divergent effects of S. mansoni infection are thought to impair host immune defenses against other pathogens and may enhance susceptibility to HIV. It is also plausible that S. mansoni egg-induced inflammation of the gut mucosa activates common mucosal homing pathways with enhanced immune cell trafficking to sites of HIV exposure. The strongest epidemiological signal for the effect of S. mansoni on HIV susceptibility is seen in women and large cohort studies in Uganda demonstrated lower HIV infection risk in people with a history of schistosomiasis treatment. However, the biological basis of elevated HIV susceptibility associated with S. mansoni infection remains incompletely understood. The overarching hypothesis of our studies was that S. mansoni infection enhances genital HIV susceptibility in women. A sub-hypothesis was that prevention and or treatment of S. mansoni would reduce this elevated HIV susceptibility. To address this hypothesis, we performed studies involving collection of mucosal immune cells from the female genital tract using endocervical uh, cytobar sampling. Our main aim was to assess the effect of treating an active S. mansoni infection on genital CD4 T cells, which can become infected upon unprotected exposure to the virus and which HIV can use to establish a founder population of infected cells in the female genital tract. This founder population then gradually expands and within days spreads across the organism, resulting in a full-blown acute HIV infection. Traditionally, 
HIV susceptibility is thought to correlate with the expression of CCR5, the main HIV co-receptor involved in sexual HIV acquisition. Activation markers such as HLA-DR CD38 and CD69 and mucosal homing integrins such as alpha-4 beta-7 which flags highly HIV susceptible cells homing to mucosae. In addition, genital inflammation defined by the escalated levels of pro-inflammatory cytokines is known to enhance HIV acquisition risk while antiviral defense mechanisms such as type 1 interferons play a crucial role in HIV resistance. To directly quantify cellular HIV susceptibility, in our studies we employed a flow cytometry-based viral entry assay in which cells obtained from cytobrushes and blood were first incubated with a lab-adapted level 2 virus containing beta-lactamase. Upon entry into cells, the virus would cleave a fluorescent dye. The change in fluorescence was then used to quantify the extent of viral entry. In this example, Cervical CD4 T cells from an HIV negative participant were infected ex vivo with a CCR5 tropic virus on the right, or left untreated to serve as a control on the left. The proportion of cells infected by the virus is found in the oval gate, indicating 7.6% of viral entry into CD4 T cells. In our clinical studies, the diagnosis of schistosomiasis was made based on the urine circulating cathodic antigen, or CCA test, which allows to assess the presence of mature schistosomes. Additional diagnostic tests, including PCR, serology, and Cato-Katz microscopy, were performed for schistosomiasis speciation and to assess worm burn. So, to address the hypothesis that treatment of S. mansoni would reduce mucosal immune activation and HIV susceptibility, we performed a prospective clinical trial. The study population in this clinical trial consisted of adult women who tested negative for HIV and sexually transmitted infections, had a regular menstrual cycle, and had a clearly positive urine CCA test result for schistosomiasis. The study procedures involved collection of blood and mucosal samples for immunological studies at three study visits before and one in two months after schistosomiasis therapy. Study participants were given a standard treatment for schistosomiasis consisting of oral praziquantel. The analysis performed assessed intra-individual changes in multiple immunological parameters after antischistosomal therapy compared to baseline. The primary endpoint of the study was the change in ex vivo HIV entry into cervical CD4 T cells one month after schistosomiasis therapy. Secondary endpoint analysis focused on HIV entry in cervical and blood CD4 T cells, as well as changes in other immunological markers at both time points. This is the study screening and recruitment flow chart. Here we can see that 348 women were screened using the urine CCA test. Of these 83, or approximately a quarter, had a clearly positive uh, CCA test result. After additional screening procedures, 36 women were enrolled into the treatment study, and samples were collected from these women for immunological and diagnostic testing prior to schistosomiasis therapy. The study participants were then invited back for follow-up at one and two months after schisto treatment. A total of nine participants were discontinued prior to visit two, primarily due to pregnancy and acquiring various STIs. And similarly, five more participants were discontinued before visit three. So ultimately, of the 36 participants enrolled into the treatment study, 29 and 24 participants took part in study visits two and three, respectively. The following is the summary of schistosomiasis diagnostic outcomes in the clinical trial at baseline. Out of 36 participants with CCA confirmed schistosomiasis, 71% had a confirmed S. mansoni infection and 35 were defined as having high S. mansoni burden based on detectable eggs in stool. Notably, no S. hematobium was detected in the cohort in agreement with low regional S. hematobium prevalence. These graphs show the results of the primary endpoint analysis. The y-axis depicts percent, graph on the left, or number of cervical CD4 T cells, graph on the right, infected by the HIV pseudovirus.
The x-axis denotes the three study time points before schistosomiasis treatment and one and two months after schistosomiasis therapy. What we see here is that percent HIV entry into cervical CD4 T cells was reduced by 2.4 fold at one month post treatment and remained lower at two months. In addition to the reduced proportion of infected CD4 T cells, there was also a trend to a lower number of HIV infected CD4 T cells per cytobrush. Similar to our findings in cervical cells, HIV entry into blood derived CD4 T cells, a secondary endpoint, was also reduced at both post treatment visits with median reduction of 1.3 and 1.23 fold, respectively. At the cellular level, HIV entry correlates with HIV coreceptor expression and cellular activation. Therefore, we hypothesize that s mansoni treatment might have reduced cellular HIV entry through down-regulation of the HIV coreceptor CCR5 and or reduced immune activation. Predefined secondary endpoints therefore included the expression on cervical and blood CD4 T cells of the HIV coreceptor CCR5, the immune activation markers HLA-DR CD38 and CD69. These graphs depict expression of CCR5, CD69, and HLA-DR CD38 on the y-axis and the three study time points on the x-axis. Unexpectedly, CCR5 expression on cervix-derived CD4 T cells tended to increase after s mansoni treatment, and CD38 HLA-DR expression increased significantly. These changes were not apparent in blood-derived CD4 T cells, although systemic CD69 expression transiently increased by over twofold one month after schistosomiasis treatment. We also assessed the effect of warm burden on immune activation. Baseline S. mansoni burden was associated with a higher level of post-treatment CD4 T cell activation, and the treatment-mediated increase in CD69 expression correlated with schistosomiasis infection intensity. Next, we assessed whether the observed reduction in HIV entry resulted from a reduced frequency of HIV-susceptible mucosa homing alpha-4 beta-7 positive cells by examining the frequencies of circulating beta-7 high CD4 T cells which are predominantly alpha-4 beta-7 positive. Treatment did not alter beta-7 high cell frequencies, although a high um, s mansoni burden at baseline was associated with an elevated beta-7 high CD4 T cell frequency. This elevated frequency remained unchanged post-treatment. Further explore the effects of s mansoni treatment on inflammation and immune activation, we quantified a predefined panel of mucosal and blood cytokines. One month post-therapy, genital inflammatory levels tended to increase, consistent with the treatment-induced cervical CD4 T cell activation, and genital interleukin 1 alpha levels were significantly elevated in S. mansoni confirmed individuals, but, and also in participants with high S. mansoni burden. In contrast to genital cytokines, blood cytokine levels tended to fall after s mansoni treatment with significant reductions in specific cytokines previously linked to active schistosomiasis including tumor necrosis factor interleukin 2 interleukin 10 and interferon gamma overall the impact of s mansoni therapy on cytokine levels was quite distinct in the blood and genital tract likely reflecting compartmentalized differences in the timing and nature of treatment induced immunological responses so contrary to our hypothesis, the clear reduction in CD4 T cell HIV entry induced by schistosomiasis treatment in our study was accompanied by transient mucosal immune activation, both at the cellular and tissue level, that directly correlated with the pretreatment helmet burden. Praziquantel, the drug of choice for treatment of schistosomiasis, has minimal off-target effects and is rapidly cleared after oral dosing with plasma half-life of about 2 to 4 hours, making it unlikely that reduced HIV entry after 1 to 2 months would be a direct drug effect in our study. However, to assess this possibility, we collected blood from 4 schistosomiasis negative controls before and after the administration of empiric praziquantel. As expected, we saw no impact on HIV entry into blood-derived CD4 T cells, the surface expression of CD69 on blood CD4 T cells, and we also saw no change in plasma cytokines in this uh, control study. So in summary, 
So far, the reduced HIV entry in our study was not due to either reduced immune activation or a direct drug effect. We next hypothesized that schistosomiasis therapy perhaps induced antiviral pathways. Reduced HIV acquisition, despite immune activation, was previously observed in macaque models of vaginal and systemic type 1 interferon administration. Type 1 interferon signaling is also stimulated by the S. Mansoni egg antigens that are released upon schistosomiasis treatment. In addition, type 1 interferons are potent inducers of CD69 and interleukin 1 alpha, which could explain our observation of both CD69 and IL 1 alpha upregulation in the clinical trial. Therefore, we hypothesized that S. Mansoni therapy triggered a global pro inflammatory type 1 interferon response which induced immune activation while exerting antiviral effects at the stage of cellular entry by HIV. To address this hypothesis, we first measured the levels of two major type 1 interferons, interferon alpha 2A and interferon beta in genital secretions. In keeping with our hypothesis, genital levels of interferon alpha 2A were elevated one month after S. Mansoni treatment in both S. Mansonite confirmed and highest Mansonite burden participants, while interferon beta was undetectable in most mucosal and blood samples from the clinical trial. We then wondered whether interferon alpha 2A could inhibit ex vivo HIV entry into CD4 T cells. To test this, we incubated lymphocytes from five S. Mansonite uninfected donors with interferon alpha 2A. We found that exogenous interferon alpha 2A directly reduced ex vivo HIV entry into CD4 T cells by approximately fourfold, consistent with previous reports of type 1 interferon pathway mediated HIV inhibition at the cellular entry stage. Notably, interferon alpha 2A also increased expression of CD69 and CCR5 on blood CD4 T cells. Therefore, overall, S. Mansoni treatment increased genital interferon alpha 2A levels. While in vitro, this cytokine induced cellular changes that closely mimicked our in vivo trial findings. To further explore the hypothesis that S. Mansoni therapy resulted in a global type 1 interferon induction, we performed a transcriptomic analysis on stored peripheral blood mononuclear cells collected from three high worm burden participants before and after S. Mansoni treatment and also from three schistonegative Ugandan controls. To reduce the effect of inter-individual variation, we used a novel computational approach and performed a paired inter-individual analysis, which enhanced our statistical power. Our RNA-seq analysis revealed that compared to baseline, the number of differentially expressed genes one month after schistosomiasis treatment was approximately double that seen after two months in keeping with the more substantial early post-treatment cellular and cytokine changes. Type 1 interference signaling was identified among the top 10 enriched pathways and there was post-treatment upregulation of genes involved in antiviral immunity. The enrichment analysis also identified type 1 interference signaling among the top 10 pathways associated with a prevalent S. Mansoni infection. While S. Mansoni treatment partly reversed schistosomiasis associated dysregulation of interferon pathways. In summary, we found that standard schistosomiasis treatment of S. Mansoni infected Ugandan adult women substantially reduced ex vivo HIV entry into both endocervical and blood CD4 T cells for at least two months, despite transient mucosal and systemic immune activation. This reduced HIV entry was associated with elevated mucosal type 1 interferon levels, and transcriptomic analysis confirmed that schisto treatment induced type 1 interferon pathways and partly reversed expression of schistosomiasis dysregulated interferon pathway genes, potentially enhancing antiviral immunity. It is important to note that high S. Mansoni burden was associated with increased expression of a mucosal homing integrin on blood CD4 T cells suggesting a mechanism for enhanced genital HIV susceptibility, although alpha-4 beta-7 expression was not substantially reduced within two months of treatment. 
given that schistosomiasis associated pathological changes are not reversed up to six months post treatment, it is unsurprising that we saw only partial restoration of immune function two months after therapy. Future studies will need to assess these parameters at later time points to understand the longer term effects of schistosomiasis therapy on HIV susceptibility and antiviral defense mechanisms. Identifying mechanisms by which treatment of a neglected parasitic infection could reduce female HIV acquisition is an important step toward designing effective HIV prevention programs. Our findings suggest that mass schistosomiasis treatment may merit investigation as a potential strategy to reduce HIV transmission. Finally, I would like to thank all the study participants and research teams without whom this study would not have been possible. I would like to thank my PhD supervisor, Professor Rupert Cole, and my PhD committee members for their immense knowledge and expertise. I acknowledge in Tebi General Hospital, the UVRI Ayavi MRC research teams in Uganda. I would like to thank our many collaborators in Canada, at the University of Toronto, at the Hospital for Sick Children, as well as in Hamburg, Germany. I also acknowledge our generous funders, Canadian Institutes of Health Research, the Vanier Canada Graduate Scholarship Program, and the Department of Immunology at the University of Toronto. And a special thank you to our recruitment teams on the ground in Entebbe. Thank you.